Okay, YouTube, part two. So we talked a little bit about sort of how you do your typical analysis and why you know a swing looks the way it looks, more or less how it functions. But I want to kind of explore a different concept here that I don't really see too many people talking about. That's actually, and really nobody really, like your typical good player, you know, when they start young, they really kind of figure this th these type of things out themselves. Um, they don't really need to look at video or get an instruction. They just intuitively figure it out. But I guess that as uh, adult golfers, we kind of learn by, first we learn really by seeing, copying, right? And then we learn by listening. But um, really the golf swing kind of needs to be learned through understanding and understanding certain concepts and that's why you know we talk about feels and things of that sort and why that's important and why you want to feel a certain way but really what they're trying to I guess articulate and it's really hard to articulate in terms of words is you really want to you really want to feel the force right you want to feel how the club revolves kind of around time and space and what you need to do to kind of make this thing move because if the club's not going to move by itself right so like <coughs> like let's kind of get into this and you know we see our typical lines here and one thing that i really want to talk about is what i like to call okay is and and it, it makes more sense once once i draw the lines here okay so let's bring her to the top here okay so bring her to the top Okay, and then so right about here. So this is sort of like obviously it's not perfect, but we kind of see this is sort of like where the swing kind of starts. You know, the club is moving back the other way. Okay, so this is for all intents and purposes. Assume that this is sort of where she's kind of going back down, right? Like one thing is you gotta remember, like you're you're not actually pausing and then going back the other way. You're it's all one continuous motion. So a lot of people actually make a mistake of kind of getting up here, pausing, waiting, like a Hideki, and he doesn't do that anymore, is the club, as it's going this way, you're going back down this way, right? The opposite. And uh, that that's really just athletic motion. And that's kind of, okay. But we won't really discuss that in this video here. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, you know, the swing kind of starts, like down swing kind of starts, you know, the bulk of it is really kind of starting here. Okay, so let's draw some lines here. So if we can imagine that uh, if we're going to rotate it, so first you have to buy into the concept that you're going to rotate around your thoracic area and kind of good players do that to figure that out because this is really the freest part of your spine right so your your mass is kind of in front of your your spine and then you need to you really really need to move this mass around your spine right so you need in order to do that I think we all understand that you kind of need like a stable axis so you're going to actually create an axis and in but to create an axis you need two points right you can't just create an axis on one point and then move because because one end is going to move like independently of the of of that one point. So what I'm trying to get at, and I'm just going to use a different color for this, is what I like to call the virtual spine. Okay, and this is actually, and generally speaking, the virtual spine would kind of be, I guess, up the middle of the sternum, um, but because we're kind of in this particular case, it's going to be sort of like right around here, right? So if we can kind of think of the virtual spine right here. Okay. And the axis, right? Remember what I talked about the two points of the axis is the... The axis will sort of be here, and it kind of is right around here, okay? And what you're gonna try to rotate around is there's a pen tool here. Is you kind of you kind of want to rotate around this area, 
Okay. I hope everybody kind of gets that. So we can see just if if we just pretend that that there was a rod that came through and then there was two points that were fixed, which would be here and here, that you can see that once you establish that, you really have no choice if you want to have a stable swing is you're going to rotate around that area, right? Right, you see that right there? Okay. So the inclination of really the shoulders, like the inclination sort of like the, the mass is going around this. Okay. Because you've established that and notice right here, the head doesn't really move much. And if we do uh, a caddy view, you're, you're going to see how stable her head is in terms of uh, going back and forth. It really is really, really stable. Okay. And that's, I guess, one, one of the reasons why um, they tell you to uh, keep your head still, right? Right. The head doesn't really actually stay still, but it does establish this, this axis right here, right? Okay, so she's created her access and all players, good or bad, kind of do this. And then there's another concept that I don't really see anybody talk about is whenever you rotate around an axis, okay, the force plane is going to be 90 degrees on the axis, right? So imagine you're spinning around here. So imagine if you had like a, a string right here and you spun it, spun it, spun it, it would, it would eventually kind of follow, want to follow this 90 degree thing right here, right? So I can kind of draw like a little picture here. So if this is your axis and you had a piece of string, right, even if it was, Even if it was like this, doesn't really matter, and it had like some weight attached to it, right? If you spun it, eventually, if you spun it quick enough, right, it would, right, eventually it would essentially straighten out, right, and it would spin over time. If you spun it fast enough, it would be 90 degrees to this, to this axis. So I think everybody understands that concept pretty easily, right? So this force axis, okay. So typically for a lady golfer is her force is kind of going to come underneath this. Okay, it's going to come right along, you know, nine, it's going to kind of turn around this, around her rib cage. Right, and this is where sort of like the upper end of her torso, I'm sorry, not her torso, but her thoracic area, right? So this is kind of where something, when she rotates, something has to hit this line. It's gonna jump onto this axis. And as we can see right there, so at some point, so in this particular case, you see that right there, her hands are gonna go onto that force plane Okay, but only for a brief moment. So if we can imagine one thing too. So let's pretend if the ball was here, okay, you would basically want to keep swinging along this force plane, right? Th if that makes sense. But obviously the ball is down here, right? So your job really as a golfer is you're gonna hit this force plane whether or not you want to or not. Ideally, you wanna hit it early and then stay below it, <laughs> right? Because once, if you hit it and you stay on it, you'll have no ability to create any leg or have any control of the shaft, right? So as you can see right here, it keeps rotating underneath the force plane and then she's gonna come sort of around the force plane, right? Which would sort of be like, 
right? So this, we kind of extend like right here, right? Kind of along that force plane. Okay, so that's sort of the simple, the general concept of how players get this. They have this. They know instinctively that this club is wants to kind of go shoot up this way. Right, so they're doing everything that they can to prevent that for as long as they can. Right. And also because the ball is down here. Right. Remember what I said, you don't want anything to really truly line up. So you're not really letting as you're rotating, you're keeping those hands below this force plane. And then right about here, you know, you get back onto the plane the ball's gone and then you kind of just let it go right but so concept so one one concept is really you have to establish sort of this virtual I guess access right by creating two points so you create your stabilizer here and you create your stabilizer either with your sternum area or with your head it doesn't really matter but regardless this club or the force is going to you're going to generate some type of force that's going to revolve around your mass right and the club is going to want to seek that out right because this is heavier than here than here than here than here right even though the club only weighs a few hundred grams once this thing is in motion, it creates more mass than every other part of the chain, so to speak. So I know it's kind of complicated, but if you kind of break it down and think of it in those terms, you'll kind of understand why you really don't want to be swinging around this, right, this area, okay? You really, really don't want to be doing that. Okay. And good players, great players, figure out so. Whereas I think your higher handicap players, because of the way they see this, and they're thinking about swinging around themselves, that's where they really come in. They'll have the shaft come in super steep, and then they'll have to shallow out the club at the end which basically you get no pressure and no leg right and if you have no pressure and you have no you don't have any pressure on the shaft or any tension on the shaft it's basically it's like playing plinko really the, the ball can go literally anywhere and you know if your timing's a little bit early you release the club the ball goes left if your timing is a little bit off and you're trying to hold on the ball goes right right so i think we've all kind of experienced that but if we if you want to like one thing is we really want to make sure that we have this create the stable access right so notice like their in her inclination throughout this area never changes right she just rotates she just allows herself to rotate around right around this axis right you see that see that like these things are you know I'm not making these things up these are just very very simple things when you it's just simple physics right you have this club that's rotating around a fixed point it's gonna want to seek what I call the truth or the force plane and you don't want it wants to do that but you are not going to allow it to do that until well past impact and that's what you know good players kind of figure out <coughs> so there we have it Elizabeth Estrell you know demonstrating one of the great swings that I've seen in professional women's or men's like just amazing amazing action really really good swing here one thing that I noticed too here is actually she doesn't uh, she doesn't actually let this thing 
like it's almost like she's kind of holding on a li little bit um, but like I said you know this ball is gone Like it's basically going straight here and uh, I would actually have a hard time imagining anybody having this swing not shooting in the par all the time I would almost figure that uh, par would probably be one of the worst scores I think this is actually just an incredible incredible swing so there you have it Elizabeth Vestro one of the great swings that I've seen and there's just so much you can learn from it. All right, thanks.